safety disclosure is don't do anything that's dangerous. Don't do anything that I've done. Do everything that you want to do the way you want to do it, not the way I did it. Don't get in trouble. Be safe and wear safety protection. So I was interested in buying one of these table tire setups, but all the ones I could see online were between $140 and $175. So I started looking for an alternative. And I came across this step for $49. It's meant for big truck tires, but I'm sure I can make it work for my smaller tires. With some wood and some clamps, I was able to make my tire tabletop for $109, which I know is close to $140, but it's further away from $175. And in this case, I have both a tire tabletop and a step. Hey, steps are cool. You can get up higher than you are now. I can stand up, take pictures of things, access the roof. And it's a step. It's two-in-one. Who doesn't like two-in-one? So watch and see how I made it all work. With bigger tires, this pin right here usually meets the rim. So in the reviews themselves, it's said to actually just put a board in between the rim and the step, and then it would work out, which I've done here. See, look, you can step up, you can look around. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get some old parts of a previous platform, and I'm going to um, make the table out of it. But first, I need to get um, a board that's just a little bit longer. This one just seemed... Like it was just about to fall off on either end, so I'm just going to make a board that's a little longer. All right, this one's much better. has a little more clearance on either end. I like this. And now I'm just going to figure out how big to make the board to go uh, for the table on the step. I've made so many different platforms, I seem to have a lot of extra wood lying around. So I just am going to use this little panel. I can't even remember what platform it came from. And I'm going to cut a little section of it. And I just uh, I have to pull out. I'm not using carpet anymore. I'm staining all of my platforms for this main purpose that, you know, it's just a pain if I ever have to go back and take them apart. But I guess if you're not planning on taking apart all your platforms, then uh, covering them with carpet is a great idea. I just like the stain. I find it a little more easier to clean and keep up with. But anyway, so here we go. I'm going to cut this out and we'll move on to trying it on the step. All right, I think this is going to work out. I later get two other clamps, but right now I was just using this giant clamp and a small clamp, but it works the same with the small clamps. But when you move them a little closer to the end of the step and you clamp it on tight, it's very firm, and I think it would be a good height for the table itself. You can load it up with different things, and when I sit down next to it, I think it's, uh, it's great. I like it. It could work out. I actually end up raising the step up a little higher to make the, the table surface higher, which works out well. Um, pulled out my little Coleman stove there and uh, pot. Now what's great about this is if the pot was really hot and you just took it off the stove, you, there's me just pretending, you could set it right there on the step. It's almost like it's meant for it because it's got those open little grip area for your shoe if you're going to step on there. But if you had something hot, you could set it right on top of that metal. I think it works out great. These clamps are really great. They're great for a lot of things. Holding wood when you're cutting them, using them for this tabletop tire setup, and using them across the board. There are many times that I would love to have a clamp. Voila! All right, let's sand down this tabletop. So in some instructions for stain, it says you just have to use a 220, or it suggests using 220 sandpaper. However, in this uh, this this moment right now, I'm actually starting with an 80, which is more coarse, and then I go to 150, and then I go to 220. Um, at that point, it was extremely smooth. Like, I just, I can't articulate how smooth it was, but it was smooth. And then I added the stain, and then the um, polyethylene, and it was just this mirror, amazing, shiny, uh, it brought out all the grains, and this is just standard plywood, but it, it really looked cool. I'm really happy how it turned out. All right, these little feet, they screw to adjust. You either, you know, screw them in or out, and that, that makes the, the, the step level or, quote-unquote, the table level. However, I'd like to make a custom board, something that's the perfect thickness and can align with those little feet and have a little hole cut out so it just hooks in and doesn't have a chance to fall out. So I'm seeing here taping together a few boards that I've, uh, I think is the right thickness, and I'm going to try it out on the step here in just a second. And that if it is the right thickness, which it ends up being, then I'm going to get another number of boards that aren't these and stick them all together and start building my, my custom board. But yeah, I'm just going gonna, gonna to unscrew the little feet here so just the little black part, the little knob there, is against the board. And then I'm going to 
in the future, cut little holes there so that just lines perfectly up with with the um, the feet. So I can just hop on. See, I've raised the step up a lot, so you definitely can see a lot further, and uh, the tabletop surface will be higher as well. If you're thinking, why didn't I just use the boards I just put together? It's because one was like a board from another build and it has screws in the middle of it and I can't use it. So I'm just getting the right length to use as a guide and then I'm going to get a bunch of other kind of um, flat plywood boards and cut um, uh, a lot of little planks, which I'm going to glue and screw all together to make my custom board. Even though this process was actually a lot of fun because I end up, you know, cutting all these little these little sections out and then I I glue them together with Gorilla glue, glue and then screw them together and then I do end up having to take one of the screws out because it lined up with one of the holes I was going to cut for the little feet on the brace and then I end up chipping some of the wood and I have to repair it. But anyway, um, when I do end up getting them all together, I then uh, sand off all the edges and they get real smooth and then I end up staining it. And then I, I put this polyethylene glaze over it and it kind of puts this like hard kind of like glassy shell on the outside, which I've done to some of my other sleeping platforms. And it turned out great. I know it's just a board, but but I sure do like it. However, you could actually just use a two by six because the, the dimensions of this thing end up being two feet long and then two and three quarters of an inch by two and three quarters of an inch. So you could have easily used a two by six and then just adjusted those feet to make up for that three quarters of an inch. Okay, now we're moving on to marking the holes on the board and then cutting out the little holes. I know I totally should have bought something like these, which I have now, but I didn't then. So I just used a drill bit to get the uh, little pilot holes going. And then I used my good old Dremel to um, uh, just kind of bore out the holes. You know, I've used this Dremel for so many things that I'm not really sure it's intended for. Or maybe it's intended for all these things. I don't know. But either way, I love it. It's very, very helpful. And um, I was able to get these little holes fit in here uh, perfectly. And it all worked out, like I always say, in the end. All right. Now that these are the right depth and the little uh, step fits right in there, just a couple more little adjustments. And that is uh, perfect, I think. Now we're going to check it out. Look at this. Boom right on there. It's not slipping off or anything. It's great. Now I'm going to take out the sander. But you know the sander is great and, and it does its um, job and I uh, use some coarse sandpaper to really get it down uh, all the, the rough edges but that Dremel man it's really the best to get the really rough edges off. You know, It wouldn't hurt to probably buy a bigger uh, sander or one of those like grinding sanders those orbital, orbital grinding sanders that, that will probably be the next purchase because I'm probably really overusing this Dremel for not what it's intended to do. Uh, but here we are finishing off with the sander and then I'm going to clean it off. Check it out one more time here on the old step. Look at this. It's going to just fit right in almost like it was custom made. Perfect. Look at that. Awesome. All right, man, look at this. It really turned out great. As I say many times, I really like how it all turned out. Now we're just going to move on to staining it and uh, then I'll add a layer of polyethylene to give it that uh, glaze kind of finish and uh, then I'll show you the whole setup what it looks like and then uh, you can go out and buy your own stuff and build one for yourself or you can pay 140 or 175 dollars and get that table but you know with this setup you get two things. You get a table and a step. Two in one. Who doesn't like two in one? I like two in one. But you know, to each their own. It took me a little while to figure out the best adjustment for this step, but I have it here. It's basically two little exposed um, holes at the bottom and on the top, and that was perfect for this setup. It's not a huge deal, but I do want to let you know there are some pinch hazards. I mean, once you figure out how this thing opens up and how it moves around, you're fine. But at the beginning, I was like, whoa, I totally could have pinched myself there. But, you know, just, just be careful. But, look, it totally works. It's very solid. I mean, when you're up there, you really can see around quite far. Now, this is an option, too, just to put the wood on top of the step. Then you get to maximize your tabletop surface. Um, I personally like it the other way around, which is putting the wood underneath the step. That way you have... Um, if you're cooking or anything like that, you can put a hot pot on top of that metal surface and then you have plenty of room down here for um, other items. But I think, as I said and said it again, 
this really turned out well, and I think it, um, I think I like it, and I like the two-in-one option, a step and a table. Thank you for watching Subaru Sleeping with Carson. I know we didn't do a platform, but I like to change it up a little bit, have some different options on there. Tune in next time when I'll be making an 88-inch folding platform that fits in half of the cargo space. You can even pull the cargo cover closed. It's going to be great. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and you'll see when that arrives to my channel. Thanks again. See you next time.